Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's May Day, May 1st, 2024. And May Day, what a day. Uh, Judge, we're with Judge Napolitano. And, uh, you know, the judge and I are very, very similar in our feelings of what America was founded upon, how we've lost our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And he's coming out with an article that will be uh, published tomorrow. And the headline of the article is, Whatever Happened to Freedom of Speech? And, Judge, thanks for being here today. Pleasure, uh, my dear friend. And I'm going to tell the audience what I just told you, uh, that every once in a while I write my article not knowing what the cover of the Trends Journal is going to be or what the core of the argument in the Trends Journal will be, but it's the same topic because you and I are so concerned about the loss uh, of human freedom today. Yep, and that's the idea. That's our uh, front page. Uh, ah, my, I'm, I'm so sad. Kent yeah. State two point oh, stormtroopers right. will beat and kill campus protesters for peace, and that's exactly what's going on. It's it's heartbreaking to see this, and it just to now you know just before we got on the air, I just read you know, they arrested a whole bunch of people in the University of Arizona and these guys all dressed up in this battle gear. Yeah. I mean, what are they, what are they fighting? You know, it's just heartbreaking. And New York City uh, police showed up at Columbia University uh, dressed like Marines storming a hill to grab 19 year old kids, boys and girls and zip tie them in the back and throw them behind their back and throw them in a bus this is just outrageous. Why? Because the university fears the donor class that has uh, uh, given a lot of money to Columbia will uh, stop giving that money if the university allows speech that the donor class doesn't want to hear. Stated differently, many of the donors are wealthy Jewish Americans, alumni of Columbia University, and they don't want to hear uh anti-war, pro-peace statements made on the campus of Columbia University because they view that as an impediment to the uh, totalitarian genocidal designs of the Netanyahu government. And Netanyahu himself gave a talk from his office condemning free speech in America. Did Biden object? No. Did Blinken object? No. Did Vice President Harris object? No. No American government official challenged Netanyahu's efforts to interfere in American domestic politics complaining about too much free speech on college campuses. I mean, could you imagine if Vladimir Putin said there was too much free speech on college campuses? The Republicans in the Congress would be jumping down his throat. You know, um, huh. It, it's just heartbreaking what's going on. And again, this guy Ackerman, Ackman, you know, one after another, these, these multimillionaire billionaires and the head of the big hedge funds, private equity groups, uh, uh, venture capitalists, they're, they're, oh, you see what's going on with University of Pennsylvania where they fired that woman, uh, Harvard, one after another, they're going after all of them and they call it, they call these anti-Semitic protests. And, and Netanyahu, by the way, somebody did come out against uh, Netanyahu, and it was Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Bernie Sanders said that, uh, no, Mr. Netanyahu, it is not anti-Semitic or pro-Hamas to point out that in a little over six months your extremist government has killed over 34,000 Palestinians and wounded more than 78,000. And Bernie Sanders went on to say that 70% of those were women and children. Bernie Sanders is, of course, Jewish. Yep. Um, as are, it's just funny, at Columbia University, the overwhelming majority of the demonstrators against the Netanyahu government are students that are Jewish. I mean, this is just crazy, crazy. But but look, the Israeli government has uh, been attempting to paint its adversaries with the brush of anti-Semitism since 1948. 
We all know they're not Semites. Anti-Semitism is a made-up word that they made up. What they claim, uh, it's hatred of the Jews. It's not hatred of the Jews. It's it's a hatred of the policies of a government. And if we can't uh, articulate uh, uh, our adversity to the policies of a government, particularly a government that is an apartheid government engaged in genocide, if we can't condemn that, then there's no freedom of speech left in America. There's no freedom of speech. And I wanted people to read this article that you wrote because you go on to say when James Madison was a member of Congress in 1791 and charged with drafting the Bill of Rights, he made two grammatical demands. One was the word the precede freedom of speech in the First Amendment and the other was a command in the Ninth Amendment that the, quote, rights retained by the people, rights too numerous to enumerate, quote, shall not be disparaged by the government. This principle that our rights pre-existed the government would be played out over and over in litigation in the centuries following the ratification of the Bill of Rights. Again, the government does not give us those rights, is what you're saying. They are our natural rights. But the government acts as if freedom is a spigot that they can open up and close. Now, this is not unique to the Biden administration. This goes all the way back to uh, the, the war between the states. The government always believes that. The government always does that even though it has taken the same oath that I took when I became a judge to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, which includes the uh, First Amendment, which includes the Ninth Amendment, which includes these recognitions that our rights come from our humanity and not from the government. So it's, it's, a, it's a unique state uh, of affairs. The University of Texas is owned by the state of Texas. The state of Texas is restrained by the First Amendment. Notwithstanding that, the governor of Texas, a so-called conservative Republican, sent 100 Texas Rangers on horseback to rough up student demonstrators who were peacefully chanting their opposition to the Netanyahu government. Of course, uh, they were arrested. Columbia University is privately owned, but it accepts so much money from the feds that it is agreed as a condition of receiving that money that it will honor and respect the First Amendment. New York also has uh, public accommodations laws, for better or for worse, that make the public parts of Columbia University open for the free exchange of ideas. Notwithstanding that, the president of Columbia, fearful of losing her job uh, because Republicans in the, in the House showed up on the campus and demanded she resign, she bowed down to them and called in the New York City police who tackled 19 and 20 year old boys and girls and zip tied them behind their backs and threw them in a bus and took them to a Rikers Island, uh, a, a hell hole if ever there was one. This is just horrific that this is happening because the government disagrees with the speech. If those kids were uh, chanting, go, go, BB, or let's get Putin, chants that the government agrees with, as absurd as those chants are, do you think their speech would be suppressed? Do you think the police would be called in to arrest them? No, because the government is making decisions based on the content of speech, and that is absolutely prohibited by the First Amendment. The mayor of New York should have said to the president of Columbia University, my police have more important things to do. We're not going to arrest children because of their speech. And did you see the size of the goon squad they sent in there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can't take the subway. You get beat up. You can't walk down the street. You get, you get, you know, hit in the back of the head in New York City. The place is rotten in front of your eyes. But boy, these tough guys, oh boy, put on those uniforms. You know, get that, those guns. 
This is a disgrace. This is a disgrace. You see these pictures they're throwing down at women, women, uh, teachers, but uh, these this is this is America. Well, what happened to a um uh uh, Emory University female uh, economics professor walking across the campus and she sees one of her own students on his stomach with his hands tied behind his back. She bends over to say, are you okay? Are you okay? The next thing you know, a guy three times her size, a, a cop, tackles her, smashes her head on the cement. She goes, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm a professor. I'm tending to a student. And she gets uh, hog tied, not hog tied, but tied behind uh, the back. The students show up. They're screaming and yelling. Uh, Ritter pointed out that the guy had sergeant stripes on, meaning he's been a cop for at least 20 years. Uh, not some newbie that doesn't know uh, what he's uh, doing. And then Ritter says, if that were my wife or my daughter, I might be in jail, but that cop would be in the hospital. You just cannot, you cannot allow that kind of behavior to go on uh, with uh, impunity. She bends over to tend to a student who's on his face on the cement. The next thing you know, her head is being smashed on the cement by a cop who weighs three times what she does. I saw America 2024. Yep. I saw the video. You go over on, you all you go on to say that moreover, the court ruled freedom of speech is so essential to human happiness and democratic values that it tolerates violence, meaning those who call, cause violence can and should be addressed by criminal justice system. But those who preach it are immune from prosecution unless they cause an immediate, unthinking, violence, violent act, meaning there is no time for more speech to challenge the call for violence. That's the law. That's the law. But they're not following the law. They're punishing and silencing the speaker. Who caused the violence? The government did. The government caused the violence on Columbia University and at the University of Texas and at Emory. There was no violence until the stormtroopers arrived in Texas on horseback. I can't believe this is happening in 2024. I guess this is the Texas imagery that the cops show up on horseback. In New York City, they were dressed like a SWAT team uh, about to take out a mass killer. Yeah. They were they were loaded with enough weaponry uh to have stormed the beaches. Yeah. Oh yeah, and by the way, these are the same cops uh, stormtroopers. That's by the way what we call them in the in the in the cover of the Transit Journal, call them. Uh, here it is. Stormtrooper. Storm yeah, we'll yep. beat and kill campus protesters for peace. Yep, and yeah. and uh, again, the uh, down in in Texas, these are the same cops. I think that when this kid was shooting people in the schools, they were outside, and the guy slaughtering people but they yeah. were too cowardly to go in there. Oh, yeah. these are the same tough guys, aren't they? Huh? Yeah, you're exactly right. You're you know, exactly right. Judge, you have an art. There's an article also, a dear friend who's a real American patriot and a real stand up man. Uh, Phil Giraldi. Matter of fact, we put his article in the trends journal this week. Students are taking the lead in denouncing Gaza atrocities. And he writes about this as well. And by the way, there's a whole section in this week's Trends Journal, uh, the, all of the college protests that we put in there as well. And um, uh, the, the article by uh, Giraldi, he mentions things like, you know, about how the, he goes, <laughs> he goes um, that thou shalt not kill Jewish people, Jewish believers actually do follow the Ten Commandments, including thou shalt not kill, while Israel has been doing nothing but killing since its foundation, as well as plenty of violations of thou shalt not steal. He's right. He's got the courage of a tiger. Yep. 
and 40 years of experience in the CIA to back them to back them up. Anti-Semitic mobs have taken over leading universities. They call for the annihilation of Israel. They attack Jewish students. They attack Jewish faculty. This is reminiscent of what happened in German universities in the 1930s. It has to be stopped. Can I guess who said that? Prime Minister Netanyahu. Yep. Prime Minister. Piece of shit, Prime Minister. Well, he knows he knows he's going to be uh, incarcerated and prosecuted as soon as the slaughter stops, which is why he's maintaining it. But this is a total lie. It is. They're not calling for the annihilation of Israel. They're not attacking Jewish students. They're not attacking Jewish faculty. But he's not condemned for lying outright like this. And... As you well know, many of these protesters are Jewish people. Correct. Jewish Voice for Peace. You have people like Norman Finkelstein, Dr. Jeffrey Sachs, Max Blumenthal. Oh, they arrested the woman that's running on the Green Party for President of the United States. Oh, Jill Stein. Yeah. I, I think Stein is an Italian. She must. That's an Italian name, isn't it? She's Jewish. Correct. Protesting the genocide. But this isn't reported. And what wasn't reported is when they had the Seda uh, uh, a little over a week ago. There were thousands of people near Little Chucky Schumer's house. All Jewish people. That many of them got arrested. Right. I wonder if they were anti-Semitic. Yeah. Well, they. Yeah. And again, these aren't Semites that are running running uh, uh, Israel. So they're the Ashkenazi Jews. They're from Eastern Europe, like northeast of Turkey, the Khazar region, from Ben Gurion to Netanyahu. They're not Semites. The Palestinians right. are Semites. People from the Mesopotamia region are Semites. So this whole term of anti-Semites is bullshit as well. Biden's campus crackdown. The Democratic Party bears its fangs again. This is from the World Socialist website. Over the past two days, American college campuses have been turned into scenes of violent police attacks on students. Young people peacefully demonstrating against the ongoing Israeli genocide in Gaza. In just its six month already, one of history's ghastliest crimes have been arrested by scores, perhaps thousands in all. Police have been deployed in combat gear and on horseback. Snipers have been arrayed on campus buildings. Cops have tased students. You saw them doing that. And here's the one you talked about. Over the past few days, America's college campuses have been turned into scenes of violent police attacks on students, uh, young people peacefully demonstrating against the ongoing Israeli genocide in Gaza, have been arrested by the scores, perhaps a thousand in all. Police have been deployed in combat gear and on horseback. Snipers have been arrayed on campus buildings. Cops have tased students at Emory University. Professor protecting students had been violently arrested. That's the one you were talking about. Right. So judge, there you have it. And by the way, um, Jewish students wearing t-shirts are saying we are Jews who say stop shooting in Gaza. And, um, and there's another one with the Jewish t-shirt, another Jew for free Palestine. So it's not, it's not anti-Semitic. The Jewish people that see the slaughter of this is what's going on wanted to stop, just like we're not anti-American when we want America's wars to end. And they're just using this propaganda to disparage those of us who are for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Judge, thanks so much for being on today, and thank you for all that you do in the name of America.
Thank you, Gerald. All the best to you.